a moment so we can exalt him. You're bigger than Jesus. Come on. He's bigger than every situation. He's bigger than every problem. Come on. He is the answer. Oh, God. Come on. In about 30 seconds, I need you to just talk to your king. Come on. Tell him who he is to you. You're my way maker. You're my miracle worker. You're my healer. You're the answer to every problem that I need to solve. Come on. If you could just open up your mouth all over the room. Because, come on, begin to speak. It's going to get better. Come on, somebody speak. It's going to get better. Because we serve a great and mighty God. It has to get better with Jesus. It has to get better with Jesus. Because no weapon formed against the shepherd. Come on, come on. We bless your holy name. Turn to your neighbor and say, it has to get better. Come on, put those hands on it, y'all. Come on, let's be a big choir. Say, people come say, people go. So the y'all like, said it's been out of control.
Everybody open up your mouth all over the room if you know he's good. Come on. Now I need y'all to get happy if you know he's been good. Let's go, T. Come on, somebody clap those hands. Somebody yell out, he's been good. Said, you are good, oh God. So I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Say, no matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Come on, just lift your hands all over the room. We bless your name in here, oh God, I will. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises. And his praises shall continually be in my mind. No matter what I say. No matter what
Somebody lift your hands all over the room. Come on, tell it. We worship you. Going all over the room. Say we worship. We Come on, real loud. 
All over the room say we worship. Come on, what would you do if the music stopped? We worship. Your hands should be up here. Here's the 
is my worship. Come on, present your worship to him. All of my worship. Present it to him. Come on, we lift your worship. As you do the lifting, he's going to do the drawing. He'll draw on men unto him. Come on. And I Come on, 
the altar is open. I'm here at the altar. Just need a touch from you. You're the only one who can do it, do it, do it. So I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for rescuing me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for your blood. Your grace and mercy follows me. Grace and mercy follows me. Your grace and mercy follows me. Your grace and mercy follows me. Your grace and mercy follows me. yourself counted yourself out you're standing here he rescued you from the battle of yourself sometimes we think it's a battle with somebody else but sometimes it's a battle with yourself that he's saving you from because your mind is going to put you in a situation that God didn't ordain so he's going to save you from yourself come on Come on, now in this moment, I need you to release. Come on, release your will to his. Come on, release your will to his. Come on, the rescuer is here. The rescuer is here. So as you lift your hands and you open up your mouth, that's your sign of surrender to him. Come on, if you, can, if you don't have any words to say, just say yes to him. Don't wait for the next song. Come on, we're in a moment here. He's waiting for you to surrender here. It was your grace and your mercy. The champion is here. My rescuer is here. The healer is here. The provider is here. The way maker is here. See, so you are here. Your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Kisi me now, mama, nyama, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today 
that you literally rescued us. You literally rescued our lives. And God, we cringe at the thought of where we would be or the fact that we would not be here at all. We thank you so much. We thank you, God, for deliverance from every secret plan and plot of the enemy. Father, we thank you for keeping us safe from every accident, every tragedy that was intended for us, and you delivered us from evil. And we just thank you so much, God. We thank you that we do not have to fear because you are our protector. And because of you, no calamity, no misfortune, no arrow by day or pestilence by night can come near our dwelling. And we just thank you and we praise you Father, we thank you that we don't have to do without you, and we don't have to be without you. And God, in these troubled times for the world, Father, we thank you that we can still have peace. And we don't know what we would do. We don't know what people do without you. How they can even stay in their right minds. And we bless you. We love you. We worship you. We're so grateful and so thankful for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that none of us are orphans anymore. We've been adopted by the Most High God. And we thank you. And we are happy and pleased and proud to call you Abba Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Father, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you for each other, for one another. We thank you that we're in the same family. Father, continue to make us of one mind and one accord and unify us so that that unity can just be seen all over this place and we just thank you and praise you glory to God hallelujah we thank you for your presence in this place in Jesus name somebody shout amen, amen. hallelujah amen. glory to God praise the Lord why don't you fist bump two or three people Say, I'm glad to see you. Amen. So glad you're here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thanks, praise and worship. Thank you, musicians. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, there's something I want to do today, so I just want to encourage you. I'm going to... Um, anoint all the men with oil. Okay. How many of you know? How many of you know that where the men go, the women and children are going? Yeah. Amen. So, <laughs> you know, us women or we women, whichever one's proper, we don't have to be concerned about God's care for the men, because where they're going, we're going. Amen? And so today I wanted to talk about, um, just talking about the men, I'm going to, again, go back to the prophecy from uh, 2021, and um, that the Lord spoke to the, 
uh, men of honor. And then we're going to look at David. This year is the year of uh, a man after God's own heart for the men. Amen. And so, uh, so I'm going to be, you know, sharing some scriptures on that. Y'all ready? All right. This is my Bible. And so is this one. <laughs> so is this. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Say, it will lift me up out of darkness into the light, out of poverty into wealth, out of sickness, come on, y'all, into health. Say, today, this day, after hearing and receiving the ever-living, the everlasting word of God, I will never be the same again. How long will you never be the same again? Very good. Oh, somebody, y'all just had to mess up. It's like, <laughs> never, ever, 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 ever will we be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, amen. Y'all can give the Lord a hand clap. And while we do that, glory to God. Let's look at Acts chapter 13, verses 20 to 22, or 21 to 23, I think is what they're going to put up there. Praise the Lord. The message is um, to the men, you will be the man that God sees. Amen. Amen. And quite frankly, I based that title on a song that the Lord gave me for the men, which I'll share in a little bit. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe it's for you. Um, so Acts 13, and it says, the people craved for a king. So God gave them, let me, I'm checking. I think I left something in my office, Kartika. My little, um, you know, I always got like 15 things. My little yellow, um, it's not legal. Yeah, small one, uh-huh. Um, so, okay, the people crave for a king. This is um, talking about uh, King Saul and King David. The people, we're talking about a man after God's own heart, which was King David. The people craved for a king. Listen, now, you know, God, he didn't want them to have a king. He said, I, I want you to listen to me. <laughs> Take instruction from me. But no, we want a king. You know, we want king like the heathens. We want king like other nations. So, so God gave, they, they craved for a king. So God gave them one from the tribe of Benjamin, Saul, the son of Kish who ruled for 40 years. After removing him, <laughs> God raised up David to be king, for God said of him, I have found in David, son of Jesse, a man who always pursues my heart and will accomplish all that I have destined him to do. I'm going to read that again. Uh, yeah, you can skip 23. After removing him, Saul, King Saul, God raised up David to be king, for God said of him, I have found in David. Now, Saul, God didn't say this about King Saul. He said this about David. He said, for God said of him, I have found in David, son of Jesse, a man who always, some might say always, always, pursues my heart and will accomplish all that I have destined him to do. Somebody say, that is my calling. M male or female, we're supposed to pursue God's heart and perform and to do. That's what we're talking about, y'all. To uh, See, I, I see us, I see us as a, um, a certain, can I say, caliber of believers. Okay, okay, so as far as I'm concerned, nobody here is playing around. 
you know, look, I could be going to the movies. I could be shopping like other people are doing. But I come to church. I serve God because I'm serious about him, about his calling on my life and your life, about us, us walking out the plans and purposes and trying our best not to miss a beat. Okay, so now maybe not every church is like that, but that's what we're doing here. Okay, so tell the person next to you, say, I'm serious about the things of God. <laughs> say, I'm not playing around. <laughs> tell them, I'm not here to waste my time. I'm here to hear and receive and be and do and have, right? Because that's what we want to do. So we're not waste, wasting our time. So, so when I preach to y'all, I'm preaching to you for a purpose and for us to change. And be that all God created us to be. Amen? Like the army. <laughs> be all that you can be. Isn't that, isn't that what they say? <laughs> but the army can't make you be all that you're supposed to be. They make you be a soldier. But they can't make you be what God wants you to be. So, so we see that David. Let me, let me move because I got a lot to do. <laughs> um, so David was a man after God's own heart. Somebody say, God's not talking just about men. He's talking about women too. But today we're talking about the men, okay? Because where the men go, the women and children go. So we, we want the men to do well, right? Uh, again, I'm going, I'm going to anoint y'all with oil. So, um, so uh, the... I don't think I'm even, so, all right, let me, I wrote some things down about David. All right, so we see that David from those scriptures in Acts, that David was a man who pursued God. Now, just like us, David had flaws. Just like us, David had messed up, right? He even murdered people, you know, I don't think that's any of us, it's not me anyway, but he even had someone murdered, okay? Um, but, but God had a plan and purpose for him. Let me say this. Lots of times people try to compare themselves to somebody in the Old Testament. But we got more grace. We have the Holy Spirit living on the inside. They only had the Holy Spirit coming upon them. So... There's a lot that they did that we can't be going around claiming, well, they did it, and it was okay for them. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because we have more going for us. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, who will help us, who will guide us, speak to us, direct us, amen? And uh, so, you know, and we got the, the spirit of resurrection spirit living on the inside. So we can't just always compare ourselves to somebody in the Old Testament, although God forgave them and he does forgive us. You know, you know, we have to repent and all that good stuff. But, you know, we shouldn't be being all proud and whatever of our stuff just because they did it in the Old Testament. You all understand what I'm saying? So, <laughs> all right. So David was a, a man after God's own heart. Another translation said that David was a man who would fulfill all my will. All right? So I want to give you some characteristics of David. So David, uh, David was God's choice. We can see from, the, from Acts there, uh, that verse, that David was God's choice. But us too, or we also, Romans chapter 8, verse 3. 33, it says that we are God's elect. God's elect. That means we are God's choice. Tell the person next to you, you're God's choice. Okay, so God selected David, but he also selected us. 
He chose us, right? Somebody say, God chose me. All right, so we don't have to be jealous or uh, distressed about anybody else because God chose you too. Amen? So, but, so uh, number one, God chose, uh, or David was God's choice. Number two, David ruled the kingdom and he ruled government according to God's laws or according to God's word. Okay? So he, that was a man after God's own heart who wants to rule like the men today. You need to want to rule your house according to God's kingdom. Remember, Jesus told them, said, y'all don't, don't worry about stuff. Right? Don't worry about stuff anymore. You need to be seeking the kingdom of God and its righteousness or my way of being and doing. God wants us to search out and seek out his way of being and doing. And that's understanding the kingdom, right? Let me just read some scriptures here where, um, where David talked about following God's laws. Now, I'm picking out scriptures that talks about the precepts, okay? And precepts is, let me give you a definition of precepts. Precepts is... A mandate, it's a commandment, it's a statute, it's, it's instructions about how to live, right? So David said in several places, he says, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Psalm 119.27, make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Psalm 119.45, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. So David wrote most of the Psalms, right? So we, we get to hear his heart. You know, this man was honest he revealed himself, he revealed his heart, he revealed when he was down, he revealed when he was up, you know. So he didn't hide anything from God, right? Even when he uh, got caught cheating with Bathsheba and killed her husband, he was in a fog. He was, he was somewhere else, <laughs> right? And so the prophet Nathan had to snap him out of it and tell him a story. He, he was just going full force in the wrong direction. Amen? But God, God stopped him. And so David shared all, uh, a lot of his experiences. But he was a man who ruled, although he wasn't perfect, as far as the kingdom is concerned, he ruled according to God's word. Somebody say, that's what I'm supposed to do. Right? And so... Uh, David guided, I wrote this down, David guided government according to God's will. So we all guide, or you men in particular, um, and, and others, females too, we guide, we're supposed to guide our house according to God's precepts, right? We don't live one way in the house and live another way outside of the house. We don't live according to the world and then... On Sundays, we live according to the Bible. So we're supposed to live that way all the time. So David was a man after God's own heart because he guided and he ruled according to God's kingdom and according to God's words. I might say, that's what I'm supposed to do. David, uh, number three, David did not allow idol worship. He didn't allow idol worship. David wiped out them idols. You know, when God brought his people into uh, whatever land he promised them, he said, when you go in, you need to tear down everything. David always tore down everything. Other people, they kept things up. And matter of fact, they started worshiping the same idols as the people in the heathen land. Right? But David, he got rid of all idols. Why was he a man after God's own heart? Because 
he got rid of all the idols. He would not allow idol worship. And so that's why for us, we need to pay attention. So how do you know what your idol is? Where you spend your time, where you spend your attention, where you spend your money. Right? How many, how many times have we gone through a day and we had time for everything else, but we didn't have time for God or time for his word, right? So we, we got to fix that picture. <laughs> we have to make sure that we don't have set anything up higher than God, higher than fellowshipping with God, higher than seeking God, which was one of David's, he was a man after God's own heart because he sought the Lord, right? So he didn't do anything, at least anything important that we know of. If he had to go, if he had to, go to war, he would seek the Lord. He would, would inquire of the Lord, should we go in? Should I go in and take it? Should I go in and fight? And the Lord would tell him yes or no. So when it came to important things, again, he wasn't perfect, but when it came to important things, somebody say important things especially. Now, we need to ask the Lord for a lot of things. And, and you hear me say often, you know, you know, if I want to go to Florida because I have timeshare, now I might ask the Lord, you know, you know am I going to be safe? You know, or something like that. But, but, I mean, you could ask him whatever you want. Everything. You can ask him everything. But David, before he made a move or took action, he inquired of the Lord. It, the Bible mentions about nine times that uh, David inquired of the Lord. Amen? And so we need to learn from him. Right? Um, number four. Is that where I am? So David did not allow idol worship. So you and I, too, if we want to be a man or a woman after God's own heart, we have to get rid of our idols. Or, or okay, yeah, get rid of the idol. You got to move your, your stuff down on your list. We, we can like shopping. We can like sports. We can like being on Amazon. We can like going to the movies, but it can't be higher than God. Right? So we really have to examine that. Do we, do we love money? Do we love money more than God? Right? That's why you, you hear me often, people get a job, they pray, they ask God for a job, and, you know, you just become a, a workaholic, and there's no room for God. And then at some point, it's like, you know what? Um, God's not even in the mix anymore. Right? Because you just work him. Working and working. Amen? So David did not allow idol worship. Uh, he would inquire of the Lord. Uh, I like Psalm 144, verse 1, for the men. It said, uh, David says, <clears throat> he, told, he said, the Lord teaches my hands to war. Right? And I like that scripture because, men, you've got challenges as a man, as a father, as a husband, and we have an enemy, we all have an enemy, his name is Satan, the Bible calls him our adversary, somebody who wants to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe. that word adversary, in 1 Peter, it, it actually talks about an opponent, or somebody in a court of law, right? So Satan is, be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary, the devil, Roams about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, right? So we have an adversary. We have somebody who wants to take us to court, right? You remember when I say often how that's why we have to get healed. We have to get healed in our soul. So when people have offended us, we have to get rid of that. Because we don't want anything for the devil to hook on to. So when he comes looking for us, he's going to slide right by us. Because there's no ledge, there's no place in us, in our soul. So Satan, tell somebody, Satan is a legalist. 
He's got to come in. He's got to legally attack us. He's got to find something in us that he can relate to. Uh, he can relate to offense <laughs> because that's how he is, and he gets people to get offended. And so we have to get healed in our soul because Satan is a legalist. And so we, any, everything, everything, just do what God says. Just do what he says, and we'll be fine, right? If he says forgive, then forgive, right? If he says don't be stingy, don't be stingy, right? We, we do what he says, amen, because he's going to legally come in. And that's a lot of people's problems because we left doors open, right? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Offense is a big one, okay? That's a big one, a real big one, all right? Um, so this, uh, David, in spite of many faults and failures, was still a man after God's own heart. God forgave him of his many sins, yet he sit, still sought the Lord. So God chose David. Somebody say, God chose me. Men of, men of honor, say, God chose me. God chose Come on, let me hear some deep voices. God chose me. God chose me. All right, say, hoo or whatever. Hoo -ah. Okay, all right, y'all like that better? Yeah. So y'all believe that more than God chose me. Come on, say, God chose me. God chose me. This, this side's always, what's wrong with y'all over here? What this side, or not unless it's my ear, maybe something wrong with my left ear. <laughs> Say, God chose me, man. God chose me. All righty. That's better. I, I almost believe you. <laughs> I almost believe you. So, um, so, so we want to be, or you want to be, men after God's own heart, right? Um, I want to read. I'm not sure if I gave you 1 Corinthians 1.26. See, there's things that God wants to do in your life, men. And I'm convinced that by the end of 2024, you're not going to be finished, but let's be who we're supposed to be by the end of the year. Right? Remember, we're serious about this. We, we need to constantly be finding out who we are in Christ. And so we want to we wanna always be searching for God's heart and what God wants to do. I'm, I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26. And I'm going to read it out of pen, uh, the Passion Translation. It says, brothers and sisters, consider who you were when God called you to salvation. Now, this is speaking to all of us, but men, I want you to hear this in particular. I've read this uh, many times. Not many of you were wise scholars by human standards, nor were many of you in positions of power. Not many of you were considered the elite. We're talking about when we got saved, right? Not many of you were considered the elite when you answer God's call. Verse 27, but God chose those whom the world considers foolish to shame those who think they are wise. And God chose the puny and the powerless to shame the high and mighty. He chose the lowly, the laughable, in the world's eyes, nobodies. So, so what am I saying? None of us have an excuse. None of us have an excuse, right? None of us can say we're not smart enough, we're not pretty enough, we're not handsome enough, we're not tall enough, we're not short enough, we're not rich enough, blah, 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 right? Because God called us just the way we are. And as a matter of fact, he likes to use people that people down and don't respect for whatever social reason there is. He likes to make a demonstration of those very people. Somebody say, he's talking about me. He likes to use those very people, the ones that the world doesn't give a second thought. He loves to use 
those people to make the wise people look dumb or look foolish. Somebody say, I qualify. Say, I qualify to be used by God. I qualify to be a man, a woman that follows after God's own heart. That's all we got to do. <laughs> right? Just be, <laughs> just be a, God, a, a man or woman after God's own heart, and he will use you. He chose the lowly, the laughable, in the world's eyes, nobodies, so that he would shame the somebodies. For he chose what is regarded as insignificant in order to supersede what is regarded as prominent. So that the world, so, so God wants people to look at us and say, hey, wait a minute. I'm the one with the degree. I'm the one with the intelligence. How'd you get that position? How'd you end up where you are? How come you still have provision in, in all this mess? With all the money getting messed up. Right? How are you still fill, filling your car? Look, that's, that's, what, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to operate in the blessing so that people can look at us, puny little us, and see God. Amen? So, so it's important for us to realize that we all qualify. You know, and then we don't compare each other. We don't look at somebody else and say, oh, well, that's them or that's their upbringing. God doesn't care where you were brought up from, right? He just, he'll use all of us and any of us. Amen? And so um, I'm, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to <clears throat> read one more scripture and then I'm going to anoint the men with oil. So the, the, the word for the men for the men of honor says, I know that many of you did not have godly father figures in your life growing up to show you my ways and teach you my truth. Believe me, it was not my perfect will for your lives. But I do have, somebody say he does have, a will for each of your lives. Amen? Amen. The Spirit of the Lord said, today I'm slapping you in the Spirit to wake up the powerful Spirit of God that has been laying dormant in some of you. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit doesn't lay dormant, but he can certainly be ignored in us. I'm waking up the warrior spirit. Come on, who are? I'm waking up the warrior spirit in you because it's time to fight. It's time for spiritual warfare. I need you on the front line. Now, I looked up what the front line, uh, when we have a parking lot ministry, we call it the front line. But the front line, we know they're the first ones to get attacked. So, men, that's you in your house. Then he, the enemy wants to come after you because if he can get the strong man, he can get the whole house. So, so as men of God, you always have to be ready to fight. To fight what? To fight the good fight of faith. Not fist fight. Not pull out your gun. But to fight the good fight of faith and using your voice. We'll, we'll see that again. I need you on the front line along with my singers. Singers were put out there for battle. To prepare for battle knowing, somebody say knowing, that your weapons are mightier than you think. They are much mightier than the enemy. Praise the Lord. Because I personally, how are they mightier than the enemies? Because God says, because I personally equipped you for this battle. So when God equips you, somebody say, when God equips you, you equipped. You got something going on. There's, there's going to be some power activated when God equips you. I need you, um, no, because I personally equipped you for this battle. And as you go and obey I will pour out a blessing on you and your household. Things that you've been hoping for and believing me for. Now, I've been teaching on hope on Wednesdays, but you need to 
know that hope, Bible hope, is not a hoping and a wishing. Because regular hope just, it means nothing. It doesn't stick. You say, I hope this, I hope that, it goes through one ear and out the other ear. I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow. Right? Well, that's like you're just left up to the weather. Right? But Bible hope is connected to God's word. Right? So it's confident expectation. Anybody been listening on Wednesday? So it's confident expectation. It's joyful excitement and joyful, confident expectation that God is able to perform what he's promised in his word. Somebody say, yay. yay. <laughs> Things that you've been hoping for and believing me for will begin to come to pass. Has that happened for anybody yet this year? For, for the men. Right? Now, I know men, men, you like to do stuff yourself. <laughs> but that's not always good. Because you can't do everything. Tell yourself, I can't do everything. <laughs> I need God's help to do some stuff. Right? And so God wants to help you. He wants to help me to fulfill all his plan and purpose. So as you go and obey, I will pour out a blessing on you and your household. Things that you've been hoping for and believing me for will begin to come to pass. And when it does, somebody say, and when it does, I'm expecting you to take the lead in supporting this ministry. Amen? I wrote here near, uh, next to leading and supporting uh, like pillars. Like your stabilizers. You keep things held up. Pillars are strong. Amen? And so God wants you to lead in supporting this ministry. I'm expecting you to lead the charge, to set the tone as I begin to rebuild the walls of this ministry with all hands to the plow, no exceptions. Amen? And it says, for those of you already in position, watch out. I'm about to blow your minds. Amen? Amen. So this is God's word to the men, right? And this is the year of the open door, but it's also the year where men, where you're going to focus on being a man after God's own heart. That's a worthy goal and a, a worthy men's goal. Um, title now the the the, the men the leader the leaders the male leaders they're going to be helping you do that and it's 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 my plan that we have something consistent for them to pray for you to say on a regular basis amen to cause all of this to come to pass because that's how it works all right so the title the title again is um now, I want to just say real quick, David was a, was a worshiper. He was a musician. Now, men, whether you can sing or not, God intends a, God, a man after God's own heart is a worshiper. Right? When you worship, you're, you're, it's, not, it's not praise. It's focusing your attention on the one that you love. Focus in attention on the one that you worship when you're a worshiper. So every man, every woman has the ability to focus our attention on God, right? David was also a man after God's own heart. He was a giant slayer, right? He was a giant slayer. I told you, I think I shared with you, Dr. Barkley said, he said, no, no giant, no champion, I declare in Jesus' name, this place is filled with champions and filled with giant slayers, male and female. 
How was David a giant slayer? He knew about covenant. He knew that God was on his side. He knew that God was for him and not against him. He knew that God keeps his word. He knew that God keeps his promises. And he told that giant, how dare you challenge the covenant of God? You, you going to bring up your uncovenant self up in here and, and threaten us? Look, men, that's you. So when the enemy comes to your house, when the enemy comes to your children, with your wife, and he threatens them, threatens to do something to them, he, he causes something to happen to them, you be the giant slayer. You're the, you're the one that says, no, we, this house has a covenant with God. Don't be coming up in here with this kind of mess. You got the wrong house. Go move to the next house. Move to 5602. Get away from 5601. Because we got a covenant with God in this house. Somebody say, I have a covenant with God in my house. Right? So you go after that giant. You purpose to kill that giant. You kick that giant out. Right? Amen. Praise the Lord. So, um, you know, the, the Lord gave me um, a song several years ago, and it's called The Man That I See. Right? And it goes, I'm going to show you, I made you, I know you, the man you're created to be. So let me correct you and love you, perfect you. You will be the man that I see. As your heart is turned towards me, I'm going to show you. I made you. I know you. The man you're created to be. Just let me correct you. Come on and love you, perfect you, you will be the man that I see. As your heart is turned towards me. And then if you learn that song, you say, you're going to show me, God. You made me, you know me, the man I'm created to be. I'll let you correct me. And love me, perfect me, I will be the man that you see. As your heart, it is my heart, is turned towards thee. Makes sense, doesn't it? Because he already sees you finished. Right? So we're serious. We're purposing to be the man to be the woman, to be the family that God sees. He already sees us. And I think I got that from Jeremiah 16, one, one of those chapters, uh, and the Holy Spirit gave me that song. But, but we need to look to God. Amen? Because he, he, he loves us. And so the least we can do is purpose to be the man that you see by the end of 2024, that God sees. But it's going to take his direction. It's going to take his instructions, right? You're going to have to seek his face. You know, uh, James chapter 1, it says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. How many of you men, you got some stuff going on? Maybe a job, maybe a business, maybe a family, and you don't know what to do. Well, God said, you can ask me for wisdom, and I'll tell you what to do. Because not every situation is cookie cutter. You're, you're, you got certain elements and situations in your house, and God, he knows exactly what to do. Right? So, that's what we want to do. So, in Jesus' name, somebody say, I'm going to be... The man that God sees. 
Amen? Amen. Women say, I'm going to be the woman that God sees. He already sees us finished. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. See, he sees beyond what we are today. He hears beyond what we're speaking today. We got to start speaking better things and, and let it be in line with the word of God. Amen. So I want to, uh, I want to anoint the men with oil, okay? So Kartika has oil for me. Praise the Lord. And the reason why, um, do, did I give you all Psalm 89? Psalm 89 video? I think I did. Maybe not. <laughs> all right, let me go down my slip. There it is. Praise the Lord. Then you spoke in a vision to your holy one and said, I have given help to one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. He's talking about David. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. And so, with whom my hand shall be, oh, yeah, let's finish because it's good. With whom my hand shall be established, also my arm shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. Come on, men. The enemy shall not outwit him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague those who hate him. Come on, somebody, men of God say, that's, that's going to be my testimony. You know, I, I also wanted to tell you um, that in Philippians, Paul said that he, he's going after that which God has, has um, got a hold of him for. So when God saves us, right, we have to discover why he saved us and what he wants to do. Why would he grab us? So, men, you all have, you're, you're, God pursued you is what I'm saying. God pursued you, men of God. He pursued you, and the proof of it is your testimony of how you got here, how you got saved, when you got saved. That's your testimony, and that's your testimony of that, the fact that God pursued you. He came after you. Amen? So we need to find out why he pursued us and what we're supposed to be doing. And that's for all of us. Amen? And so I want us to look at that uh, before I anoint the men with, with oil. All right. So, um, Andrew? Andrew? Greg? I guess I, I, guess I need... Need a second keyboard player, huh? <laughs> Don't make me play. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Well, men, I want you to prepare yourselves and um, to be anointed with oil, all right? Let me, let me do this first. All right, can you stand up? The men stand up. I've got some things a few things for you to declare, okay? Say, I declare and decree that I am a man after God's own heart. In Jesus' name, I shall pursue the heart of God. I will accomplish all that God has destined and plan for me to do in 2024. I will do all of my Heavenly Father's pleasure. God has anointed me with the Holy Ghost and with power. I will go about doing good in 2024. I am a man after God's own heart. Say, I am God's elect one. I am God's chosen one. I do and will run my home 
run my family, run my business according to God's precepts. I will seek and inquire of the Lord. I will seek him with any decisions and actions before I move. Say, I will, or he, say, he will teach my hands to war. Say, I am a man after God's own heart. Say, I am a worshiper of God. Say, I am a giant killer because I am a man after God's own heart. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, y'all. I want you to get ready for a refreshing, for an anointing to be the man that God created you to be. All right, so I need you to be ready. I need you to receive. And so when I anoint you with oil, I want you, I want you to receive by faith an anointing to do more. Amen? To be more. To have more. All the things that we believe God for. Amen? The Word of God causes us to be who, created, who He created us to be so we can do what He created us to do so we can have what He's created us to have. Somebody say, I think it's about time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I want you to come up here with faith. What, I can, what we can do is we can start with sections and come up here and uh, like this section first and then you can come over here and um, I'll anoint you. Come on. We're going to be the man. You're going to be the man. <laughs> well, he has to come over here. <laughs> I said this section. <laughs> but y'all can just... Y'all can stand, y'all can stay there. I'm just trying to keep some order because I know y'all strong and everything. I don't want you to stampede me. <laughs> Amen. So I'm going to anoint y'all with oil. I hope you still don't have COVID jivers because I, I only have 10 fingers, okay? So you, somebody going to be touched with the same finger. In Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. Say, in Jesus' name, I will be the man that God sees. Amen. You're right. He said, that's right. Correct your pastor. He said, I am the man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You're welcome. Say, I am, by faith, by faith, the, the man that God sees. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you anoint all these men, that you anoint their actions, that you anoint their good words. Father, I pray in Jesus' name they will be men who seek after your heart, not their own dreams, but to seek after your heart, your plans, your purposes. Come here, I'll say, I'm a mighty man of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, speak to them. Speak to them while they sleep. Speak to them while they eat. Show them things to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, give him direction. Give him direction. Let these men be witnesses. For the goodness of God and the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, ladies. Let's thank God for these men. Where, where y'all go, we go. We're all going in the same direction. In Jesus' name. We're going up. We're going out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Believe you receive. Say, I'm going, say, I'm going to know what to do. I'm going to know what to say in every situation. In Jesus' name. Say, Lord, I'm so glad that you don't look at my faults to determine who I am. You already see me. You already know me. You already imparted something in me. In the name of Jesus. I want y'all to say all week, I am the man that God sees. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, anoint every man. Anoint every man. Anoint every man with power. Let every man know his authority. Let every man, come on, man, you're going to have to open up your mouths every day and say something that God said and agree with him and he'll back you up. One of your weapons is your mouth. One of the doors in 2024 is your mouth. Your mouth is a door. It'll let good things in or bad things in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let this oil be an indication of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your sons, your sons, hallelujah. Come on, men, say, I'm a son. I'm a son. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm a son of the Most High God. Glory to God. Kison do boshihada. Menon do boshihada este brota aste. Kison bo oshta be fede. Menon go saki du shu he baha se se se. Menon amase te do oshta. Kison broto zuta masi hadiga. Kison do do boshikrete. Somebody give me, give me a tissue. Kisondo bo manyene. Kisondo bo bo shahaha. Including you, Bobby Baines. Hallelujah. Kisombo oshta asti. Kisondo bo sha. Y'all ready? You ready? You ready, Freddy? I know. He said, that's not my name. <laughs> well, they say, don't call me outside my name. In Jesus' name, I call you anointed. How about that? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for a move of God on our men. Lord, speak to them. Give them visions. Come on, y'all. Y'all, I know, I know. Most of y'all, y'all already see something. Something that, something good that won't go away. You know, I, I decided we should start doing again, telling each other, God's getting ready to do something good Amen. in your life. Amen? Tell somebody, ladies, tell somebody, God's getting ready to do something good in your life. Because he's a good God. You're welcome. Hallelujah. God only has good things. 
Hallelujah. Even when we don't understand, he's working on something good. Even when we're experiencing something, he's working on something. He's trying to bring out that man that he sees. He says, I got to chisel you. I got to mold you and shape you for your plan and purpose. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Say, but I am the man that God sees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where y'all go, we go. Glory to God. Where you go, our family goes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all still awake? You ready? Say, I believe I receive. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Anointing. Fall on me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anointing. Fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Kisoa. Kisoa. Lord, give them wisdom. Give them all wisdom. Misa, susubusa. God, cause them to know what to do in any situation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Young man. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Anoint your sons. Anoint your sons. Kisobu. God, give them witty inventions. Let them know what to do. Give them new ideas. God, give them new connections, new friends. He said, hey, oh. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Okay. Good point. Good point, son of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for causing him to know what to do in every situation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got enough oil for five more heads. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe ten. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anoint your Son of God for the days ahead. Hallelujah. Remember to seek the Lord for wisdom. Seek the Lord. Like David did. Lord, should I pursue? Lord, should I quit my job? No. Not till you have another one. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Lord, anoint your son with wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Did I get everybody? Hmm? What? What? Media? Whatever man wants to come out here. Praise the Lord. I don't do this every day. So we'll wait for you. Anointing. Fall on me. Anointing. Fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, thank you for empowering your sons. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. We got all the men. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, we thank you for a new day. We thank you for a fresh anointing. We thank you for men after your own heart, God. We thank you for wise men, for mighty men. Glory to God. Come on, men, say, I'm a mighty man. I'm a mighty man of God. Say, God gives me instructions. He tells me what to do in life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What? What's Mr. Margaret saying? Yeah. Teresa? Uh, you, okay. <laughs> Thank you. What? The musicians? Yes. Yep. Hallelujah. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, just in line with what just happened in here today. The Spirit of the Lord is saying to the men of honor, mm -hmm. as you receive the anointing, he says, I'm calling you into a deeper relationship with me as Father, mm -hmm. as Abba. He's saying that I am not the father you knew. I am not a father of abandonment. Yeah. I am not a father of abuse. Yeah. I am not a father of neglect. And I'm going to show you in this moment that I am not that man that you knew. Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw you close, men of honor, to my heart and show you how to be all that has been spoken over you in this moment. And even as you leave this place and, and, and you begin to encounter me as father, I want you to open your eyes and see and to know and to experience me all over as father. Even the men that are not here today that are in relationship with you, I'm going to transfer the anointing onto them because this is the season that I am raising up mighty men of God because I need you to do what I'm planning to do here in the earth today mm -hmm. in this moment. So every man that you encounter, I'm going to transfer the anointing. Wow. And you'll begin to see and to know that I am God. But not only am I God Almighty, mm -hmm. I am your Abba Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Of, co of course, Abba, Abba means daddy. Amen. Praise God. So God is being informal and telling you you can call me daddy. Daddy, Father. Amen. So that's a different kind of relationship. Amen. Than calling him Father. You know. So he wants you to 
go directly to him. You know, every culture uh, is different. You know, you don't hug boys or, you know, you, you be rough with them or, you know, too much affection will make them, you know, a certain kind of way. No, God wants to love on you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he wants to be close to you, men. Praise the Lord. So close that you can almost feel yourself wiping the, you know, kids. They wipe the, if you, somebody give you a wet kiss. Yeah. They, he wants to get that close. But don't wipe it off, though. That would be silly. But um, praise the Lord. Well, let's give the Lord another hand clap. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. I'm going to put this right here. That's fine right there. Well, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to give an invitation. Perhaps there's somebody here that's not born again, and we want to make sure you join and come into the family of God today. So if you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your personal Lord and Savior, not just Lord, but your Lord, I want you to repeat this prayer, if you will, after me. And if you pray this prayer from your heart, as you pray it out of your mouth, out loud, you'll be saved if you mean it, if you're sincere. And so just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner. And a sinner needs a Savior. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful that you're my Savior. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart that when you died on the cross and went to hell to serve my sentence, that God the Father raised you from the dead to live forever. Say, Lord Jesus, I call you Lord right now. I receive you into my heart as my Lord. I confess you as my Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you now to come into my heart, be my master, be my savior. Say, devil, you can no longer Lord over me because today I have a new Lord and his name is Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. I am saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, if that was anyone, anybody in here, you could just raise your hand. Was that anybody in here? You, you prayed that prayer for the very first time. Is that anyone here? Praise God. Everybody here is saved. I'm assuming. Anybody pray this prayer to rededicate your life? Praise God. Right here. Praise the Lord. We got somebody who rededicated her life to the Lord. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you um, uh, go with um, Yvette in the back. She's got some information for you, okay? And pray with you. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give her a hand. Amen. Praise God. All right, everybody. Um, well, it's time for tithes and offerings. As Minister Kim, <laughs> that's why you, I saw you go from your seat to over there. All right, let's give her a hand as she comes. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for being obedient to the call of God and for praying over these mighty men of God. I just thank you that you did not get distracted by the fact that you're a woman, but God gave you a command, and the anointing has no gender. So I just want to encourage you men to receive all that God has for you, because he's talking right now, and open your ears to hear. Amen? Amen. So it's time for tithes and offering. If you are joining us online, we ask that you prepare your tithes and your offering. And I just want to remind you that tithing is repeatedly mentioned in the Bible. In Deuteronomy, it tells us to set aside a tenth of all our field produce. And we might not think we're farmers, but in the sense of that time is what God was commanding them to do. But he's commanding us to put aside something for God. And that something is a tenth. And God commanded it for the purpose that his house would be provided for. 
And we want you to know that when we rely on God, he is developing in us a faith and a trust that only God can do. And so spend that time with God, eat on God, so that his presence, so that God can share with you what it is you need to do. I know that I have a mighty man of God, and he always wants to make sure that we're provided for. So he goes to God first, because in the natural, the enemy can attack him. But spiritually, he can't touch it, because what is our foundation scripture? Revelation says in 3, 7, that God has opened a door that no man can shut. And when he shuts the door, no man can open it. So if you go to God first, he's going to show you men of God and women of honor what it is that you need to do in order for him to bless you in these days. Amen? Amen. So I just want to remind you additionally that tithing and offering, it's far above anything the world could give to you. And when we do that, we're showing God that our hearts belong to him. We're showing God that we trust him. We're showing God that we have faith in him. We're showing God that we want to be obedient and that we want to be a part of what God is doing this day in the body of Christ. Amen? And Proverbs 11.25 says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Amen? So, Pastor, we thank you for the refreshing because you refreshed us today and you refreshed the men. And so God's going to refresh you. Amen? <laughs> It also says in Proverbs 18, 16, that a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great one. If you are a giver today, God says in his word that it's going to usher you, the giver, into the presence of the great one. And finally, Mark 21, 41 through 44, and I'm reading that's in the Passion Translation. It says, then he sat down near the offering box, watching all the people dropping in their coins Many of the rich would put in every large sum, but a destitute white widow walked up and dropped in two small coins worth less than a penny. Jesus called his disciples to gather around, and then he said to them, I tell you this truth. This poor widow has given a larger offering than any of the wealthy, for the rich only gave out of their surplus, but she sacrificed out of her poverty and gave to God all that she had to live on, which was everything that she had. God knows what we need. He is a God who sees, and he knows even before we can ask. But God wants us to ask, because when we ask, we acknowledge that he is our God, he is our Lord, and he can do far above what we could ask or think, but we have to ask. Amen? So no matter what it is you have a need for, a need of, Put the demand on God. It's not too hard for God, but you have to be willing and obedient. And in your willing and obedient, God will give you the desires of your heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. Video, will you show us the ways in which to give? Here at Living Faith, we have made giving easy by using electronic options as much as possible. You can text to give by texting LFCCNJ to 77977. You can give once or set up as a recurring gift. Just enter in your details, confirm your gift, and you're done. You can give through our LFCCNJ Church app. This method will look similar to text to give The iOS version of the app can be downloaded at the App Store, or you can get the Android version on Google Play. You can also give online at lfccnj.com slash giving. If these options are not possible, you can obtain a pink envelope and deposit it as you leave. We thank you again for joining us today. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. And as was shared, you can put your offering in the boxes as you um, exit the sanctuary. Amen. So let's stand to our feet and do our confession over our giving. Amen. Ready? Let's read. We declare that because we are tithers, we receive the promise of the scripture that protects those who tithe and give offering. As a household, we are committed to tithe and give to the Lord's work. Therefore, we claim tithers' rights. That means no devourer, destroyer, waster, plunger, or pillager can rob from us in Jesus' name. They cannot steal our blessing or fruitful harvest. They cannot steal from our home, businesses, or from any of our loved ones. 
The destroyer can't strip away our heritage or harm our children. We stand in the tither's blessing, which promises that the Lord will rebuke the evil one on our behalf. We stand in the tither's blessing that the Lord will open up heaven's treasure and pour out blessings we do not have room enough to receive. We stand confident that the tithe is raising a standard against every demonic plot and attack. We have faith that as Jesus, our Lord and eternal high priest, stands in heaven receiving our tithe, we are under the covenant of his blessing. We prophesy that the promise to the tithe rests upon our families in Jesus' name, according to Malachi 3.11 and Hebrews 7.8. Amen. Amen. And every time I say that confession, I just thank the Lord that no pillage or plunger or, or can take or just away what belongs to us. And I just thank God. You know, my daughter's getting ready to move to Arizona and it was a decision that she believed and prayed to God for, and God just opened up every door. So when I say that confession, I say it with confidence knowing that God's got her. We don't concern ourselves about her because God's got her. Just like pastor said, sometimes men always want to fix it, and my husband's a fixer, but God can fix it all. And so I want you to encourage you to trust God. When you're obedient, he hears your prayers. You can trust God to take your children and your loved ones and take you wherever you desire. And God's got your back. Amen. So let's pray over our tithe and offering. Thank you, Lord. Most heavenly God, we thank you, Lord God, that you have given us a way to be obedient on this earth, Father God. And as a result, God, you are blessing us not only in the natural, but in the spirit as well, God. Lord, you have a future and a plan for us, Lord God, that, Lord God, only you know. But it's in our obedience to you, God, that it shall come to pass. So, God, I ask that you take this seed that we have sown, Lord God, and we ask that you bless it, Lord God, not just physically, Lord God, but spiritually as well, Lord God. Father God, I pray, Lord Lord God, that it will take us above and beyond what we could ask or think, Lord God. I pray that no one in this room, God, who's being obedient to what your word has said shall be without, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, that even if they missed it, God, you will minister to their heart to fix it, Lord God. For the devil is a liar over us today, God, in every possible way. And we don't receive anything that he speaks to us. And now, seed, we command you to go and you grow and you go into this ground and you bring back a good harvest, a godly harvest, one that exceeds that what the world would say, God. And as a result, Lord God, we will continue to give again, again, and again. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Thanks, Minister Ken. Praise God. Um, The marriage ministry, obviously, Married couples, you know, got postponed till this coming Friday. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. So uh, we had issues with, um, with the power in the building, in the rooms that we could congregate in. So it's this Friday, right? All right. We're not going to show the video, are we? Okay. All right. All right. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that 68 families, we uh, served food or we gave food packages to 68 families yesterday. (laughs) Amen. Praise the Lord. And that includes uh, seniors. Amen. You all know we kind of adopted uh, Pensacan, well, yeah, assist, yeah, senior living, Pensacan Towers, yeah. I I don't want to call them, I I used to make a mistake and call them a nursing home, but it's a senior, (laughs) senior living. So we've adopted some of the seniors over there, maybe 15 or 16 that need assistance every month. And um, so they were included. Uh, Our Men's Connect group will be held Saturday, April 27th from 10 to noon. All LFCC male members are invited. All right, so that's April 27th. My, 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 the month is going so fast. I want to welcome any first-time attenders. Do we have any first-time attenders? Anybody? Anyone? Any first-time attenders? Can you just wave your hand in the air like you just don't? I see you. We see you. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else? Anyone else? I see that hand back there. She's waving her hand. Come on, y'all. Let's make them feel welcome. 
Praise God. So glad you came to be with us this morning. You could have been anywhere, but you came here. So we're, we're happy about that. You know where we live. You know what we look like inside and what we sound like. So uh, don't be a stranger. You're, you're welcome to come back anytime you like. Come on, y'all. Say, welcome to Living Faith. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I also want, at this time, ask if there's anyone here, you've been coming to Living Faith, and you, you've decided you, uh, that this is where the Lord wants you. God wants you to be a part of this local church, this local church. There's local church all over the place, but God likes to fit us in the one. He actually likes to set us in the body of Christ the way it pleases him. So anybody here today, you think it pleased the Lord that you uh, join Living Faith? Anybody today? Praise God. All righty. Okay. And of course, the marriage ministry, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> the altar will be open after we close out in prayer. All righty. And I, um, uh, when I said a certain caliber of members, let, let me just say it's our vision. Okay, I'm going to put it that way because all Christians are equal. They're all the same, came from the same seed, came from the same father. Uh, but our vision is that every believer uh, find out their purpose and that you actually become dependent on God and that, that you rely on God alone where you, you, know, you get to a place where you don't need much assistance or uh, help. But you've learned to trust God for everything, right? So, in other words, we, 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 we want to grow up. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, I'm excited about what God has already begun to do in the lives of our men. Amen? I'm so excited. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, just, just keep saying, I'm the man that God sees. Praise God. And he does see us. Praise the Lord. All right, well, you can stand, and we're going to end in prayer. Praise the Lord. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Greg. Hallelujah. Thank, thanks, all of you. Uh, I, I love y'all. You know, I'm, I'm so glad that y'all are here. I know a couple weeks ago I had the members who've been here at least 20 years stand up. But I'm just thankful and grateful for all of you. You know, you're my family, and, you know, and you keep me from being by myself. <laughs> so, and, and working by myself. So, I appreciate you, and I love you. I love you for helping and uh, loving uh, the members and, and, and the vision. Again, this, this year will be 39 years, and next year will be a big deal, 40 years in, in ministry. Yep. <laughs> So, that's a big deal. Thank you, Lord, you didn't close our doors. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you've sustained us. We're out of debt. Amen. And by faith, all our needs are met. Come on, y'all. Say, by faith, all my needs are met. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I got, there's, we got stuff in store. Amen. Praise God. Blessed to be a blessing. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Again, Father, we stand in faith that today began something, uh, a, a fresh season, a new season, God. I pray that as I anointed each man that something happened in their spirit. God, let them notice it. Let them hear your voice clearer than they've ever heard before. God, give them clarity of purpose, clarity for their home, clarity for their health, clarity for their spouse, their children, their business, uh, for everything that concerns them, Father. So we just thank you and we praise you. God, we thank you that you're concerned about everything that concerns us, and we trust you to perfect it. And we bless you. We call ourselves, because you've already called us, blessed, happy, fortunate, empowered to prosper, and to be envied. If that's you, somebody say, I'm blessed. All right. Love you. Mwah.